The all-new Shimano EP6 EMTB system allows brands such as Aubert to make stunning bikes such as this, lightweight, compact, with a ton of great features. In fact, the EP6 shares all of the characteristics of its stablemate, the EP8, just a bit more affordable. You'll be seeing the EP6 on a lot of bikes this year, so let's have a look at some of the features that makes it so special. Change of scene for a minute. Uh, mentioned earlier that the only difference between EP6 and EP8 is in the weight, and that's down to the fact that EP8 has magnesium casings and EP6 has alloy. Now we've moved west, we're still deep in the heart of Basque Country, we're at the HQ of Orbea Bikes, and I want to introduce you to a different philosophy of EP6, and that is EP6 RS, and that's at the heart of all Orbea Rise bikes. In today's video, Shimano have invited us out to northern Spain to explore the fine detail of this potent Japanese powerhouse. You might have already noticed we're riding a certain breed of EP6 bike, and that is the very popular Obea Rise, which is fitted with an RS version of the motor. What is RS? Well, it's an EP6 in every way. The hardware is exactly the same, but it has different firmware added. Rise RS is a philosophy, more bike, less E, as Orbea say. These are slightly lighter bikes, and Orbea have worked very closely with Shimano on the firmware to make it work just the way they want. Earlier in the week, we visited Orbea to pick up my bike. One of the differences between EP6 and EP6 RS is the torque. We now have 60 Nm compared to 85, but that's going to have an effect of increased range, the 1.5 factor. So uh, lower torque has a knock-on effect of battery life. So for example, a 540 watt hour battery in the Rise is going to be the equivalent of an 810 watt hour battery in a full power bike. But remember, the standard EP6 motor has more power, 85 newton meters, and EP6 is available on a whole lot more bikes. These range from basic hardtails to mid-travel 150 mil trail bikes, and also longer travel enduro beasts too. The great thing is that with EP6, no hill is too steep, and Shimano's great battery options means range is never an issue. Having said that, the Rise is a great example of the whole package, and remember, every EMTB needs that. I think the Rise RS is a fantastic example of the combination of motor power, battery, weight, and of course the geometry. There's a great geometry on this bike. You've got 29 inch wheels front and rear, 140, 140, you can have 150 fork if you want to. But I think the key message here is that if you think about it, the, the Rise RS is kind of at the, the top end of the mid power bikes in terms of, of the torque and the power available, but at the low end of the full power bike. So really it's actually bang in the middle, which will be well, perfect for so many riders. So what is it exactly? Well, the all new EP600, or EP6 as it's known, sits alongside EP8 and has all the performance of EP8, but at a much more affordable price. Remember, both the 6 and the 8 can accept Shimano's second generation batteries, have additional accessory ports, and are compatible with both Hyperglide Plus and Linkglide electronic drivetrains. Remember, this is a new DI2 system only available for EMTBs. Now, a key fact of EP6 is that it's been launched alongside three brand new Shimano electronic drivetrains. And these are the 11-speed XT DI2 link light system, which you might already have heard of, although note this is an addition to the existing cable-operated system. Then there's the 12-speed XT DI2 Hyperglide Plus, and finally, the QS DI2. You know me, me, me. Now, the new system has some very cool features and some great integration. I've already been using the link light system for a few months, but I think it's the all-new free shift and auto shift technology, which is really interesting.
There's a very easy natural assist to the EP6. It's light, it's natural, and super reactive. Woo! In simple terms, with free shift, you can change gear whilst coasting. When the shift buttons are pressed and the rider isn't pedaling, the motor advances the drivetrain chainring and spins it forwards. It's great for exiting corners or big G outs. Auto shift, on the other hand, automatically chooses gears for you. It constantly is searching for the optimal gear and it makes changes based on your speed and your cadence. Very key for an EMTB to get maximum power. I really think those predictive gear changes based on speed and cadence are really cool features. But remember, they're only actually available on DI2 with EP8 and EP6. What I haven't talked about so far is actually the physical differences between EP8 and EP6. Well, I think the only thing actually is the weight. Remember, the characteristics of the motor are exactly the same. But in terms of weight, we're looking at 2.7 kilos for EP8 and 3 kilos for EP6. And the main reason for that is the different housing, different casings. We've got magnesium on EP8 and alloy on EP6. Wow, what a place. Okay guys, this is the EP6 RS, super steep slab, no problem, I love e-bikes. I mean, you can imagine the power of the EP6 on a slab like this, this slab's going to be ludicrous. Oh, so good. I really love the new EP6 remote. In my opinion, it's got everything you need. Of course, should you need a display that shows all your metrics, you can bolt a head unit onto your stem or alternatively, remember the Shimano EP6 motor can connect to a Garmin, which some motors cannot. And that shows your cadence, super important on an e-bike, your battery level and your mode. Very cool. The new remote, Shimano's neatest ever. Let us know your thoughts. Okay, what's it got? Battery LED level, assist mode up and down. It's got on and off switch, display scroll button, and of course, the light mode switch. And then of course, you've got the eTube app. Now there is a ton of features on here. Remember, you can connect that to your bike or a third party device, such as a Garmin. So what have you got? Well, one feature I use is using it to change the nature of your EP6 mode, such things as acceleration. And when you do that, you can choose either to go for a bike which has got a lot of range or a lot of power. You can update the software on the bike. You can fine tune the nature of free shift and auto shift. And um, you can actually use it as a training tool as well if you've got a third party device. Lots of features in there, lots of them. Whoa, that's steep. Now I mentioned earlier how the compact size of the EP6 allows frame designers to be more flexible with their geometry. And the reason for that is you can get a longer chain stay on an e-mountain bike, which is super important to get a good climbing e-bike. And as for power, EP6 RS, it's not short of it. There you go folks, a look at the all new EP6 Shimano motor with a ton of features. And remember, only with EP6 and EP8 can you connect to auto shift and free shift. I've been riding the EP6 RS out here in Basque Country and it has a ton of power, plenty enough to get up some super technical climbs. So with the standard EP6, you're gonna get even more power.